Way back in 1974, a small wooden scallop trawler was dredging the sea floor, about 230 feet below the sea surface and nearly 60 miles off the coastline in the Chesapeake Bay of Virginia. When they pulled up their net, they found the partial skull of a mastodon that began its slide into extinction about 12,000 years ago. The fishermen also noticed a flaked blade, which turned out to be made of a rare volcanic rock called rhyolite. The fishermen couldn't lug the skull back to shore in their tiny wooden boat, so they sawed off the tusks and teeth, tossed the rest overboard and handed portions to the crew as souvenirs. The captain gave the remaining tusk portions, teeth and knife to a relative, who donated the remains to a local museum in Virginia. There they sat, unnoticed, for decades until discovered by archaeologists. By measuring the fraction of radioactive carbon isotopes, marine archaeologists found that the mastodon tusk was more than 22,000 years old. There was no way to date the blade precisely, but the flint napping technique used to make it was similar to that found in Salutrian tools, which were made in Europe between 22,000 and 17,000 years ago. The flaked blade shows evidence of weathering in open air, then saltwater marshes, and finally the ocean. Because sea level submerged the area about 14,000 years ago, the weathering suggests that the tool was made at least that long ago, and that people may have been living on the Atlantic coast at that time. Melting glacier raised sea levels and submerged that area of the continental shelf about 14,000 years ago, so the knife must have been at least that old. In addition, both pieces showed characteristic weathering that indicated they were exposed to the air for a while and then submerged in a saltwater marsh, before finally being buried in seawater. That finding suggested that the two artifacts were from the same environment, such as the marshes found between sand dunes that are often set back from the seashore. That would have been a perfect place for mastodons to find food. This spear point is almost an identical match to points made by the people of Western Europe around the same time, and should be considered one of the most remarkable finds in North America, but for some reason it has been dismissed by many archaeologists due to the stunning implications. In fact, the notion that the ancestors of Native Americans were not the first or only people on the continent has great popularity among some, who see it as a means of denying Native Americans an ancestral claim on their land. What's more, although this particular iteration is new, some believe the idea behind the Salutrian hypothesis is part of a long tradition of Europeans trying to insert themselves into American prehistory, justifying colonialism by claiming that Native Americans were not capable of creating the diverse and sophisticated material culture of the Americas. The Salutrian hypothesis is not without flaws, However let's just look at the facts and some new discoveries that suggest that this hypothesis is not so far-fetched after all. Maybe it was not by Salutrians from France, but by another group from England, who used similar technology but also had important differences. New archaeological evidence from Norway and England suggests that America was colonized by Stone Age people from Northwest Europe some 15,000 to 20,000 years ago. This does not mean that they were the first people in the Americas or that they contributed to the genetics of the culture of Native Americans. Just like the Vikings around 1,000 years ago, these people arrived on the east coast of America, most likely from what is today England. But when they arrived they were not greeted by other human beings. They found a true wilderness populated with megafauna that they were familiar with, mammoths and mastodons. In Europe by this time these beasts were becoming relatively scarce, but in the Americas, they were still dominating the landscape. These ancient Europeans also had the technology to hunt these animals, including large spear points. Stone Age humans were quite capable of making the 1,500-mile journey across the Atlantic ice, but till now there was comparatively little evidence to support the theory. Now there is evidence from northern Norway in the form of rock art depicting a boat that looks identical to the seal skin boats made by the Inuit of Greenland which is dated to at least 10,000 years ago. So if people were using this type of boat to colonize the far reaches of Norway by this time, these is ample reason to believe that they could have used the same boat to cross the ice and reach Greenland and North America. Sealskin boats were light enough to carry and could move quickly while carrying multiple people and items. Such a vehicle would be ideal for colonizing the seascapes in northern Norway and beyond during the early Mesolithic. In fact, 
This style of boat used by the Inuit of southwest Alaska was so versatile, that it was adopted by 19th century whalers in preference to the new Bedford whaling boat. During the last glaciation almost all of Scandinavia was buried beneath a thick permanent ice cover. Thus, the Stone Age came rather late to this region. As the climate slowly warmed up by the end of the Ice Age, nomadic hunters from Central Europe sporadically visited the region. However, it was not until around 14,000 years ago that permanent, but nomadic, habitation in the region took root. However, the seasonally shifting zone where the ice ended and the open ocean began would have been extremely rich in food resources, migrating seals, sea birds, fish and the now extinct northern hemisphere penguin-like species, the great orc. The similarity between other later eastern North American and western European Stone Age tool technologies has been noted before. But all the European-style tools unearthed in America before were from around 15,000 years ago, long after most Stone Age Europeans had ceased making such artifacts, it was believed. Most archaeologists had therefore rejected any possibility of a connection, but the newly dated Eastern North American stone tools are from between 26,000 and 19,000 years ago, and are therefore contemporary with the virtually identical Western European stone tools. Furthermore, these types of tools were not found only in mainland Europe, they have been found in northern England and Wales, which during the Ice Ages would have been connected to mainland Europe, and Scandinavia by the submerged Doggerland region where the Black Sea is today. Two leading archaeologists analyzed all the evidence, and proposed that Stone Age hunter-gatherers from Western Europe migrated to North America at the height of the Ice Age by traveling, along the edge of the frozen northern part of the Atlantic. At the peak of the Ice Age, around 3 million square miles of the North Atlantic was covered in thick ice for all or part of the year. The discoveries are among the most important archaeological breakthroughs for several decades, and are set to add substantially to our understanding of humanity spread around the globe. Humans were in the Arctic 45,000 years ago, so the idea that they could not have crossed the frozen Atlantic 20,000 years ago is ludicrous. In fact, the Inuit have a saying that the sea ice is our highway. Indeed, men and women 20,000 years ago were not sitting around waiting to become prey, they were highly mobile hunters and gatherers who were reliant only on themselves and their environment. They were pumped on hormones, compared to modern humans and they could accomplish things that we would never dream of, such as crossing an ocean in a kayak. The mechanism of nature is survival of the fittest, because it's necessary for human evolution. Imagine if our ancestors never came out of their caves or explored the wilderness, never risked their lives or followed their guts and their testosterone. Humanity would still be living in the Stone Age, and the Americas would never have been discovered. For years, a team of archaeologists painstakingly excavated layer after layer of ancient stone tools looking for a sign of the first people to arrive, in the Americas. Now, they have finally hit the jackpot, 11 spear points ranging from 13,500 to 15,500 years old, in the western stem projectile point style. That places these stone tools among the oldest artifacts ever found in the Americas. What's more? The uniquely shaped spear points lay buried beneath tools from the Clovis culture, dramatically demonstrating that the Clovis people were not the first to arrive in the Americas, as archaeologists long believed. So Clovis first has long been debunked, how about the Salutrian hypothesis? Creswell Crags is an enclosed limestone gorge on the border between Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire, England, near the village of Creswell. The cliffs in the ravine contain several caves that were occupied during the last ice age, between around 43,000 and 10,000 years ago. Its caves contain the northernmost cave art in Europe. The marginality of human figures in cave paintings suggests that, at least from a human point of view, the central drama of the Paleolithic went on between the various megafauna, carnivores and large herbivores. So depleted of megafauna is our own world that it is hard to imagine how thick on the ground large mammals once were. Indeed, the site of the Criswellian culture has caves that have yielded one of the most important British series of extinct megafaunal remains, accompanied by tools of Paleolithic hunters. The Criswellian culture is regarded as a variant of the Magdalenian culture of southwestern France, and occurred during the final stages of the last glaciation. 
Finds at the cave include flint tools of Mousterian, Protosolutrian, Cresswellian, and Mesolithic types, as well as harpoons used for deep sea fishing. Their leaf points were spear tips, and they are one of the earliest recognizable objects made by fully modern humans in Britain. This is a particularly good example from Creswell. It is estimated to be 38,000 to 35,000 years old and is known as a Protosolutrian spear point. The evidence of occupation found in the rich series of sediments that accumulated over many thousands of years is regarded as internationally unique in demonstrating how prehistoric people managed to live at the extreme northernmost limits of their territory during the late Pleistocene period, around 20,000 years ago. The style of art of Western Europe is reminiscent of the mammoth bone carving found in Florida, dated to around the same time. Evidence of humans hunting mastodon, possibly assisted by wolf dogs, also exists at two locations in Florida, dated to around 15,000 years ago. Indeed, the first legendary Florida man may have been an ancient Englishman from Doggerland. As stated, the remarkable collection of several dozen European style stone tools, dating back between 19,000 and 26,000 years, discovered at six locations along the U.S. East Coast, including one was discovered by fishermen on the seabed 60 miles from the Virginian coast on what, in prehistoric times would have been dry land. This spear point is nearly identical to those found in Western Europe, but it is very different from the Clovis spear point. If the people living on the east coast of North America 26,000 to 19,000 years ago had come from Asia via Alaska, these early artifacts, dating from before 19,000 years ago, should have turned up in those two areas, but none have been found. Furthermore, although Northwest Europeans may well have been among the first to reach the Americas, they had a major disadvantage compared to the Asian originating peoples who entered the New World via the Bering Straits, or along the Aleutian Islands chain. Whereas the Northwest Europeans had only had a 4,500-year-long ice age window to carry out their migratory activity, the Asian-originating Native Americans had some 15,000 years to do it. What's more, the latter two-thirds of that 15-millennia-long period was climatologically much more favorable, and substantially larger numbers of Asians were therefore able to migrate. As a result of these factors these people were either absorbed by Native Americans or were substantially obliterated by them either physically, or through competition for resources. The Stone Age was not a unicorn utopia, it was a place where you were humans' ultimate prey species and megafauna ruled the Earth. Archaeologists reject this hypothesis on the grounds that the type of spear points found in Western Europe, and the Americas do not overlap in time, but this has proved incorrect. They also point out that the Salutrians of France do not show evidence of going to sea, but there are peoples from what is now England, who lived at Creswell Crags, that used the same spear points that also have been found with harpoons, proving they went to sea. Doubters also say that the lack of European genes in Native Americans is proof, but these people were small in number and either died out, or were completely absorbed by the large wave of people who came from Beringia around 15,000 years ago. There were most likely other groups from the East who had arrived in Western North America even earlier.